Clark Hodges, financial strategist with Hodges Capital, live from Dallas, Texas this morning. On that was the week there was. Good morning, my friend. How are you? I'm good, Gary. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. It's great to have you aboard this morning. Uh, lots happening this past week, obviously. Uh, do you have a takeaway? Was there, was there anything that you learned this week? Uh, and we're going to be asking people that in our 8 o'clock hour this morning. Anything that kind of you lingered on this week, you look back and you said, man, I walk away from this week thinking about this one thing. What would that have been? What I don't understand sometimes is why every person in the world has to have their opinion blasted on social media about current topics. Um, and I feel the, the, uh, the weight of, do I need, should I put something out on this? Because if I don't, am I going to be considered a racist? Right. Right. And, and, or, you know what I mean? I mean, so I think it's, it's, that's been on my mind. I mean, if I do put out something that everyone is trending with and I'm part of the crowd, you know, great. But do I need to? I mean, if I don't feel like just doing it, you know, I'm sitting there watching all this stuff unfold. I, but it's, are people in my network going to say, well, why didn't Clark put something out, right? And so yeah. that's kind of the over-the-top thing. And then this Drew Brees thing, um, you know, look, I don't know exactly what he said, but, you know, he's entitled to his opinion just like everyone else is. And well, let me, then let me he, give it to you. Let me give it to you real quick. All that stuff. Yeah, Wednesday he was doing a um, – he had shared a message of unity on social media. And Wednesday he was asked by, I, I forget what uh, newspaper it was or what media group it was. It was a uh, Yahoo Finance. That's it. And uh, he, so he, he was asked about uh, his stance on, on people taking a knee, you know, in the NFL. And he said, quote, he will never agree with anyone disrespecting the flag of the United States of America quote unquote, during this interview with Yahoo Finance. Now, Yahoo makes no bones about what side of the coin they're on in terms of uh, left and right. I mean, if you ever read Yahoo, I mean, they, they, their idea of objective journalism went out the window a long time ago. He also gave a lengthy response to ESPN when asked about the perceived conflict between his statements, including a potential divide in his locker room where players like Malcolm Jenkins and Demario Davis are among the leaders of the Players Coalition seeking social justice and racial equality. He then said this, and this is an exact quote from Drew Brees, quote, I love and respect my teammates, and I stand right there with them in regard to fighting for racial equality and justice, unquote. Then this, quote, I also stand with my grandfathers who risked their lives for this country and countless other military men and women who do it on a daily basis, unquote. And he also said, just to reiterate the quote from earlier, I will never agree with anyone disrespecting the flag of the United States of America. He got deluged with criticism and then comes back and starts to basically apologize. I think he's on his his third apology tour now. And frankly, I'm disappointed that, first, as you said earlier, that if you didn't comment that somehow people are wondering where you stand on this, if they don't know you well, or even if they know you well, the fact that they insult you by not knowing where you stand is is a ridiculous thing. But the point being here that, if, if, if you have your own opinion, that's not respected. You can't just say, well, Drew has a different opinion than I do in this and let it go at that. No, no, no. you got to browbeat someone until they come around to your way of thinking. And that is a scary place for me and looking at America if that's where we're going to try to be. What are your thoughts? Right. I mean, and, and, and i got to just say this. These are football players. Who gives a damn what they think about these current topics? I mean, maybe their family should think about, care about what they think and their teammates. But the rest of the world, who cares? I mean, right. I mean, who cares what a freaking football player thinks about something? But that's over the top and where we've gotten to in this country. I don't care what LeBron James thinks he can, he can say. Sure, he's in the public spotlight. Sure, he's a public figure. Sure, he's entitled to say whatever he wants about any subject. But what I don't understand is why, why, that, why people in America look at that and they go, oh, my gosh. I've got to think like LeBron James. He's right. so good at basketball. Or I got to think like Drew Brees. I mean, what Drew Brees said and what you just read is absolutely nothing. Absolutely right. nothing wrong with that. And so now I guess we're to assume that going into the NFL season, that every player 
better kneel or they're going to be called out like Drew Brees is called. So every player on the team, they better kneel or they are racist. Well, and, and the idea be. that and there's... I think I, I can't wait to watch that. Yeah, the, the idea that there's not another point of view that's allowed to be heard now in America because the we's are in control of the narrative. Uh, you know, remember the old we's and they's in the high school, and if you're on the they's, you were the one getting mocked, and if you're on the we's, it was fun to be part of that large group because you felt that security of the cocoon. Uh, yeah. Jenkins, uh, Malcolm Jenkins came out uh, and basically said he was hurt by Breeze's comments and that they were extremely self-centered. Why was that extremely self-centered? I don't get that, uh, and and I really don't with understand. The in his locker room, he said, "I stand with them against yes. racism." Malcolm Jenkins needs to learn how to read because that's exactly what he wants Drew Brees to say. That's well, exactly and then he went on to he want him to say. He went on to say, our, "This is Malcolm Jenkins now saying our communities are under siege and we need help." And what you're telling us is, don't ask for help that way. Ask for it a different way. I can't listen to it when you ask that way. We're done asking, Drew. And people who share your sentiments, who express those and push them throughout the world, the airwaves are the problem, quote, unquote. Uh, Yeah, but I I think Malcolm Jenkins makes the point here. When someone says, listen, I think you could be really effective. I want to be there with you, helping you. And yet at the same time, uh, you know, taking a knee to me is not the right way of doing it. I think there's other ways. And and Malcolm Jenkins is saying, you know, basically you're being self-centered because you have your own opinion. Really? Is that where we've got yeah, to? Yeah, and so these, these two athletes, if they were going to do something for the good of the community, whether you're talking about their town, their, their team, or their country, they need to get on social media standing next to each other and say, we're teammates. And right. he thinks – on this topic one way, and I think on this topic one other way. But we can get along. We can go to war together on the football field and be teammates, and that's okay, America. That's okay. But, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm considering buying a gun. Yeah. You know, I am the poster child for white privilege, right? And so people are going to want to come and take my stuff. Or, you know, i got to now think about where I drive my car in the city of Dallas at a certain time of day because there could be protests and, you know, they would be up in arms about, you know, if I drove through, you know, it's just one of those, it's craziness. It's just crazy. Well, and and, I am am no way in shape or form agreeing with what happened, but my gosh, what the, 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 the officers have been charged. They're in jail. They've been fired or at least one of them has divorced from his wife. I mean, what is the current protest now? What do they want besides just being out and risking everyone's coronavirus, right? Because, I mean, we obviously better have some huge spikes in the coronavirus based upon all these things, because if they don't, then the coronavirus was a joke. Yeah, interesting statement. And I was thinking about that the other day. If if you don't see the huge spikes, uh, there you go. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins finally said, he said, it's unfortunate about Drew Brees because I considered you a friend. He said this in a video. He said, I looked up to you. You're somebody I had a great deal of respect for, but sometime you should shut the blank up. Uh, And used a pretty foul word there. Uh, He then added, uh, even though we're teammates, I can't let this slide. And by the way, Drew Brees reached out to Malcolm Jenkins to talk to him about this. And Malcolm Jenkins comes back with a video. The, The one problem I see today, Clark, about 20 seconds left here, is we think symbolism is the end in st- and, and, and all of the various protests. And I think there's a place for that. Don't get me wrong. I think there's a place for healthy protests. But symbolism in and of itself is not the solution. Symbolism is bringing it out in front of people, and the solution then comes with the doing and the working together to find something that's going to work for all people. About 30 seconds left. Your final thoughts. Well, I'm just still thinking about the football aspect. Of it. I mean, you know, um, Drew Brees is going to make the team. Malcolm Jenkins is older defensive back. He might have to make the team. I mean, you know, um, so the fact remains that if anything happens to Malcolm Jenkins, you know, it would be considered racist. So the team's racist. They cut him. You know, whether he plays one year and they cut him or what have you. But, you know, locker room unrest won't sit well with the team. But Drew Brees has – he's going to be there because he's the quarterback. 
and that position is harder to fill than the defensive back. So yeah. anyway. And I got news for you. If that you're case, looking at that if you're looking at that team and you say, Okay, let's see, I'm the running back or the lineman and I'm really disagreeing with Drew Brees, guess who's gonna be there at the end of the day yeah. who's most valuable to the team? I think is the point you're trying to make. Yeah, hey, good exactly. stuff this morning, Clark, and uh hopefully things are gonna smooth out a little bit here in the long run and, and solutions will come up, but uh always appreciate your point of view. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Take care. Talk to you again next Friday. Clark Hodges with us here on WSBA Morning News with Gary Sutton. WSBA Morning News.